Hello, my name is Janie Taylor and I'm back to work on step two of the warping from front to back process. Now we started in our first video uh, winding the warp and we're going to continue along in the second one. First thing I'll do is to take the reed out of, out of the beater and I'll just unscrew the wing nuts, lift the top off, and then just lift the reed out. Once I have my reed out of the beater, I'll just place it in my little reed holder. Now if you don't have one of these, they're pretty easy to make, or you can just use a couple of large books to hold this upright. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. So the next thing we need to do is to get our warp belts ready to thread. So I'm going to take my two lee sticks and my two warp belts, and I'm going to put the lee sticks through the threading cross that we made in the first video. So I'm going to look at my two belts. And I'm going to see the proper order that they need to go on the lee sticks. I'm, you can see that it's pretty easy to isolate where that threading cross is because of the ties that we put on. So we're going to put one of the lee sticks through this side of the threading cross and the other lee stick through the other side. Now I'll do the same with the other one. I'm just going to look at this threading cross and be sure that I'm getting them in the proper order, that I've got the two middles together and the two edges on the outside. So there's, there's that opening and here's this opening. I'm just going to put the th lee sticks right through those openings. So we have the, we have the threading loaded there on the uh, lee sticks. So the next thing we want to do is tie the ends. You can see there's holes in the end of your lee sticks, and those are to tie them together. All right, I'm going to tie this together, leaving a little space between the two sticks. So there's just enough space for me to manipulate my threads around. All right. Now that we have the threading cross secured with our lee sticks, it's time to take out our ties. So since I tied a bow, I can just untie these and take them off. As you can see, I've removed all of the ties and cut the ends of the warp so we can begin to slay the reed. Now we're ready to start slaying the reed. Uh, I have my warp all set out and I have my reed here and I have my reed hook that I'll be using to pull the threads through the reed. I also need to have my glasses on for this operation. Okay, so I'm going to just put my hook starting right in the middle and I'm going to be pulling the threads through. The slaying order that we have, this is a 12 dent reed and we want 18 ends per inch. So in this case we're going to be pulling through one and then two, one, two, alternating and giving us an average of 18 ends per inch. So I'll go ahead and start with one. So find that first thread. Pull it through. Go into the next dent. That's what we call the slots in the reed. Pull two through. Go in. Find the next one. Pull one through. And then two again. I'll just continue doing this until I finish the first half. And then we'll come back and we'll start on the second half. Now that I have the first half slayed, I'm just going to take a moment to straighten this out. Just pulling back on the kite stick and the warp and combing back and making sure that everything is straight and pretty even at this point. And what I'm going to do here, just, just as insurance, I'm going to give this a little knot so things don't, so the threads don't pull back through. All right, I'm on, ready to go on to my second half. I'll notice what my slaying order was here. I started with one, so the one next to this, I'll need to put two in this, this uh, first one on the second half. So I've got my threads all ready, and I will continue to slay my reed, and when I have the rest of it done, we'll continue on with threading the heddles, which is our next step. 
All right, we're going to put the reed back in the loom. Let's lift it out of its holder. I'm going to just set it right back in the bottom of the beater. Push it down. And then put the top back on. Now the wing nuts face out, so we'll put those in. Push down to hold it in place. And we'll just tighten up the wing nuts. All right, once the beater's in place, we want to tie these lee sticks to the front beam. So I've got two ties. I'm just going to tie the back stick to the beam. Not too tight, just enough to hold it in place. We'll be using these lee sticks to add a little tension to the warp as we put it on and to kind of straighten things out as we go. Get those tied. Right. So we have our kite sticks just pretty freely here. We've got our all of our threading cross in the lee sticks. Now we need to go around to the back of the loom and start checking just to make sure that we have enough heddles and that everything is in the right place. All right, I'm arranging my heddles uh, so I can get started threading. What I want to do is move half to the center, the half that I need, and move the ones that I'm not going to be using over to the side out of my way. So I need four on each one of these shafts, half of each shaft. So I'll move four to the center and move the others to the side. The easiest place to count your heddles and, and see what's happening is right up on top. You have a clear view of all of your shafts and all of your heddles, and it's just an easy place to, to uh, do this. All right, I'm ready to start threading my heddles. I have all the ones I need pulled over for this half. I've pulled the, this half of the warp through just far enough to um, be able to pull it through the heddles. I have my heddle hook. This is a nice long hook for pulling your threads through the heddles. And of course I have my threading plan. This is going to tell me exactly which heddle to pull each thread through. So I'm looking at this and I see that the first three ends are on shafts 24, then 23, then 24. So I'll pull those over and I'll start threading those. And then I'll continue on to complete the whole threading draft. I'll pull over the first three heddles that I need. 24, 23, and 24. Then I'll reach back and find the first three threads in the reed and pull them through the heddles. One on 24, one on 23, and the next one on 24. I'll push those over out of my way. The next thing I'll need are ends on shafts 13 to 24. So I'll pull those heddles over and then thread them. The easiest way to be sure you're pulling over the right heddles is to do it from the top. Up here on the surface you can it's easy to see um, which shaft you're on so I just count back to 13 and then I'll start moving those heddles over one at a time. So there's 13 and then 14 and so on till I have them all over. Once I have those heddles pulled over, I just push them into a nice angle, line them up, make it for easy threading so I can see each one in order. I want to take my time and make sure that I'm checking my threading plan frequently and uh, just making sure that I'm doing this right. It's very easy to make errors at this point. You want to take your time and just do a, a good careful job of it. Every time I complete threading a group of heddles, I'll check to make sure I have it right. I may count the threads and make sure every heddle has a, an end in it. Once I'm sure that it's correct, 
I'll comb it out a little bit and then move the whole group over out of my way. Tie a little overhand knot to protect anything from happening and I'm ready for the next set. So I'll pull over a set at a time and then thread those, make a group and keep going until I'm finished. Well, I finished threading the first half of the warp and now I'm ready to go on to the second half. In this case, all I need to do is pull the heddles that I need from the far left and just move them over into, into the area where I can thread them. So I'll continue along with this. I recommend using a heddle hook for threading your heddles, but if you don't happen to own one, you can always use this simple method that doesn't require any tools at all. Just take your warp end, fold it in half, and just push it through the eye of the heddle. Again, take the warp end, fold it in half, and push it right through. Alright, once I have all of my heddles threaded, I'll need to move them back into position. So I'm just going to put my slide my hand in, just gently ease them over. So the warp threads are coming out perpendicular to the reed. I'll just do one small section at a time. Just move it over. And the next one. Just helps to put my whole hand in and, and move them at the top and the bottom. There they go. Alright, that looks good. Now we'll do the other side. They don't have to be perfect at this point, just more or less lined up, aligned with the reed. Before tying onto the back apron rod, I took a few moments to straighten out the warp and then I added a stack of heavy books to the warp just to weight it so I would have something to pull against as I tied it on. To make it a little easier for you to see me what I'm doing as I tie on, I've tied the um, apron rod onto the main castle of the loom, which actually wouldn't be a bad idea to try yourself. I'm going to need to tie my warp onto the back apron rod, so I'll just take it in small groups. I'll take each one, kind of comb it out. You can see why I wanted to have that, those books on there to give me a little tension to comb against. So I'll take a couple of my small sections, comb them out, then I'm going to just tie them to this back apron rod. Make sure all of my threads get included there. Okay, I'll just comb that out and tie it to the back apron rod. I just split it in the middle, pull it around, and then make it and then tie, make a single tie. So I get my hand out of the way there for you. It makes a pretty flat knot, which is a good thing. Okay. I'm going to comb out my little section here, split it in half, I'll comb out my little section, split it in half, take it around underneath, make sure I have all the threads in there, and then pull it up. After you have the whole warp tied onto the back apron rod, you want to go back in and make sure that you've given each one of these a second tie to make sure that it's secure. And finally, I like to come in and trim off any excess that we have here so we can end up with a much smoother warp package that way. Just trim these off. Not too short. the warping process is to actually wind the warp onto the back beam so it will be ready for weaving. So we'll do this a step at a time. We'll be going from the front of the loom to the back of the loom, putting the paper between the layers of warp, and just trying to make a nice, tight, evenly tensioned package. So let's get started with that. I've got my two kite sticks with my warp on them. The first thing I want to do is just give them some holes and some stroms. Just 
making sure that these all the threads are nice and uh, straight. So I'm just going to let those hang here while I go around to the other side, around to the back of the loom. And I'm going to start winding the warp on. And at first I don't need to have any paper in at all. I'm just going to start winding. I'll put on a couple of rounds and I'll come back around to the front of the loom. Make sure things are still looking okay on this side. Nothing, nothing um, tight and jammed up. Just making sure that everything evened out. Anything's looking loose. Get a little pull. Back around. Winding on. Now when my knots, let me turn this around for you a little bit. When the knots reach the back beam, I'll start, I'll add my heavy paper first. So, so you can see how this heavy paper is going to be protecting the rest of the warp from those knots. It's nice and heavy and as I wind it on, I'm just going to cover that up. All right, in the front I'm just pulling, strumming. Making sure this is nice and straight, and then I'll go around to the back and roll some more on. I'll just roll a little more on here, and as I, as I run out of paper, I'll just add in another sheet of our brown paper. Tuck that right in. Get nice and straight. And then just start getting it started here. And then back to the front, and so forth. After having rolled on a few revolutions in the back, I need to tighten this warp up on the back beam. So I'm just going to give it a nice, I'm going to brace my hand, and really pull back hard with half of it, and pull back hard with the other half. Maybe do that again. I'm going to make sure that the warp is good and tight on that back beam. All right. So back to strumming, a little combing, and just winding back and forth. Okay, I want you to see how we're straightening these threads out, making sure there aren't any loose ones or any that are too tight. Just keeping them all nice and straight. Once I have those ties removed, I'm just going to do the same thing, just comb it out. Sometimes there's a little unevenness when you get to a choke chain. Just going to comb through it, strum it a little. You'll usually just straighten right out. It looks like I have a little something catching right here. Let me pay attention to what's happening there. Okay, ready for a little more winding on. I've come to the end of the first paper, and so I need to add the, a second one. Same way, I just tuck it right in. And get it nice and straight. What I'm really looking for back here is just a beautiful cylinder. I want a nice a cylinder. I don't want a big hump in the middle. I just want it to be a nice, long cylinder. Let me get that started. start winding that on. You can see that the lee sticks are adding a little bit of tension to the warp as it goes on and making sure that it stays straight. So I'm getting close to the end of my kite sticks. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the warp off of those. They've served their purpose. I'll save them for the next warp. All right. I think I have one more choke tie coming towards the end. And I'm just going to continue to straighten this warp out. Keep it nice and even. Keep it nice and tight until I'm finished. All right, we've nearly come to the end of our warp. You see it came out pretty even. Those choke ties really did their job, keeping everything in place. But I am just going to even this up just a little. I'm going to cut these loops and just cut off that last little inch or so.
Now I can take my leaf sticks out, just on take these ties out, untie one end, just pull them on out. They've also served their purpose. Now we save them for the next warp. Right. Now rather than let this get really short before I start tying my little bunches for lashing on, I'm going to leave it out at this length and then I'll wind on a little more later. We're going to be using a method called lashing on to tie our warp onto our uh, front apron rod. So the first thing I need to do when I'm doing lashing on is to divide the warp into small bunches, comb it out, and just tie a nice overhand knot in that section. So I'll just continue to uh, comb these little bunches out, tie a knot, until I have them all done. Once I have all these tied, I'll go around to the back and wind on a little more. Let's watch. I need to have enough space to get a thread through there. Just a little, just about there. That looks like a good spot. I'm going to be using carpet warp for this lashing on procedure. Uh, I just need about three times the width of my warp. So I'm just going to measure three times and then a little extra. Come in a little closer and maybe you can see what I'm doing here. I've tied the carpet warp to the apron rod. Now I'm going to just loop it through all of the little warp bunches that I made. So we're just going to take this through more or less the center of that little bunch. Pull it through around the bar and up through the center of the next bunch around the bar. So you can see I'm making a continuous lashing of the warp to the bar. And you'll see how handy this is when I get it all done. I'm not worrying about keeping these really tight right now. I'm just snugging it up as I go along. We'll adjust it when we're all done here. All right, I'm just on the last couple here. Up through, around the bar, and up through, and then finally, I just will tie it to my apron bar. All right, so now it's ready to go, and I'm going to start just evening out that tension. I can feel I have some that are kind of tight and some that are kind of loose. I'm just going to pull on them, kind of even that out a little bit. When I have it more or less even, I'm going to just roll on a little in the front, add a little tension to that. Again, just pull. And you can see because because all of the little bunches are inter, um, interconnected with that lashing cord, that any if I have a tight place, I can move it to a loose place. If I have a loose place, I can move that looseness over to a tight place. And in pretty short order, I have my warp perfectly tensioned. Right, now that we have the warp beamed and tensioned, our next job will be to hook up the computer and start weaving.